but to come back to those places of God, to get nurtured, to get water, to get the, the things that you need, Amen. and uh, to be present. Um, I don't know about you, but I know that God is watching either way. <laughs> right? God is watching either way. So, um, the worship design team, we were talking about this, this, this staying present, present with one another. And uh, we decided that there's this really great book by Spencer Johnson, who's an MD. So if you indulge me, I'd like to read you a story. That's good. All right. And I'm going to sit. All right. Mix it be more... We can turn the lights off now. Yeah. <laughs> Just leave this one on. So it's there for you. The Precious Present by uh, Spencer Johnson. Once there was a boy who listened to an old man and thus began to learn about the precious present. It's present because it is a gift, the contented man said. And it's precious because anyone who receives such a present is happy forever. Wow, the little boy exclaimed. I hope someone gives me the precious present. Maybe I'll get it for Christmas. <laughs> the boy runs off to play, and the old man smiled. He liked to watch the little boy play, and he saw the smile on the youngster's face, and he heard him laughing, and as he swung by a nearby tree, the boy was happy, and it was a joy to see. The old man also liked to watch the boy work. He rose early on Saturday mornings to watch the little laborer mow the lawn across the street, and the boy actually whistled while he was working. The little child was happy, no matter what he was doing. It was indeed a joy to behold. When he thought about what the old man had said, the boy thought he understood. He knew about presents, like bicycles, like he got for his, for his birthday, or like the gifts he found under the tree at Christmas time. But the boy thought more about it. He knew the joy of toys never lasts forever. The boy began to feel a bit uneasy. What then, he wondered, is this precious present? What could possibly make me happy forever? He found it difficult to even imagine the answer. And so he returned to ask the old man, is the present a magical rug? One that I might uh, put my finger on and it will make my wishes come true? No, he was told. The precious present has nothing to do with wishing. As the boy grew older, he continued to wonder, and he went to the old man. Is the precious present a flying carpet? He inquired. One that I can get on and go to any place I like? No, the man gently answered. When you have the precious present, you will be perfectly content to be where you are. The boy was becoming a young man now, and he felt a bit foolish for asking, but he was still uncomfortable. He began to see that he was not achieving what he wanted. Is the precious present, he slowly ventured, a sunken treasure? <laughs> Perhaps rare gold coins buried by pirates long ago? No, young man, the old man told him, it is not. The riches is rare, indeed, but the wealth of the precious present comes only from oneself. The young man thought for a moment, and then he became annoyed. You told me, the young man said, that anyone who receives such a present would be happy forever. I never got such a gift as a child, 
I'm afraid you don't understand, the old man replied. You already know what the precious present is. You already know where to find it. And you already know how it can make you happy. You knew it best when you were a small child. You simply forgotten. The young man went away to think. But as time passed, he became frustrated and finally angry. He eventually confronted the old man. If you want me to be happy, the young man shouted, why don't you just tell me what the present, precious present is? And where to find it? <laughs> Sounds just like that kid. The old man volleyed. Yes, exactly, the young man demanded. I would like to, the old man began, but I don't have such power. No one does. Only you have the power to make yourself happy, the old man said. Only you. The precious present is not something that someone can give you. It is a gift that you give yourself. The young man was confused but determined. He resolved to find the precious present himself. And so he packed his bags and he left. And he went elsewhere to look for the precious present. After many frustrating years, the man grew tired of looking for the precious present. He had read all the latest books. He had looked on the wall, in the Wall Street Journal. <laughs> he looked in the mirror and into the faces of other people. He had wanted so much to find the precious present that he had gone to extraordinary lengths. He had looked for it at the top of mountains, in the cold, dark caves. He had searched for it in the humid jungles and underneath the seas. But it was to no avail. His stressful search had exhausted him. He even became ill, but he didn't know why. The man returned weakly, wearily, to the old man's side. <coughs> the old man was happy to see him, and they often laughed out loud together. The young man liked to be with the old man. He felt happy he, in the old man's presence. He guessed that was because the old man felt happy with himself. It wasn't that the old man's life was so trouble-free. He didn't appear to have a lot of money. He seemed to be alone most of the time. In fact, there was no apparent reason why he was so much happier and healthier than most people. But happy he was, and so were those who spent time with him. Why does it feel so good to be with him? The young man wondered. Why? He felt, and he left wondering. After many years, the once young man returned to inquire further. He was now very unhappy and often ill. He needed to talk with this old man. But the old man had grown very, very old. And all too soon, he spoke no more. The wise voice could no longer be heard, and our, the man was now alone. At first he was saddened by the loss of his old friend, and then he became frightened, very frightened. He was afraid that he would never learn how to be happy. Until he finally accepted what had always been there, and always been true. He was the only one who could find his own happiness. The unhappy man recalled what the happy old man had told him, so many years ago. But as hard as he tried, he could not figure it out. He tried to understand what he had heard. The present has nothing to do with wishing. When you have the present, you will be perfectly content to be where you are. The richness of the present comes from its own source 
The present is not something that someone gives to you. It's something you give to yourself. The unhappy man was now tired of looking for the precious present, and he had grown so tired of trying that he simply stopped trying. And then, and then it happened. He didn't know why it happened, but it happened. It just happened. He realized that the precious present was just that. The present. The present. Not the past, not the future, but the precious present. In an instant, the man was happy and he realized that he was in the precious present. He raised both hands triumphantly into the cool, fresh air because he was full of joy for at least a moment. But then, just as quickly as he had discovered it, he let the joy of the precious moment evaporate he slowly lowered his head, touched his forehead, and frowned. The man was unhappy once again. Why? He asked himself, why? Didn't I see the obvious so long ago? Why have I missed so many precious memories and moments? Why has it taken me so long to live in the present? As the man remembered the fruitless travels around the world for his search for the precious precious present, he knew how much happiness he had lost. He had not experienced with each special time and place had to offer, he had missed a great deal, and he felt sad. The man continu continued to berate himself, and then he saw what he was doing, and he observed that he was trapped by his guilt about his past. And when he became aware of his unhappiness and of being in the past, he returned to the precious moment and he was happy. But then the man began to worry about the future. Well, he asked, will I be able to know the joy of living in the precious present tomorrow? And then he saw he was living in the future and he laughed at himself. He listened to what he now knew and he learned the wisdom of his own voice. It is wise for one to think about the past and to learn from the past, but it is not wise for one to be in the past, for that is how I lose myself. It's also wise to think about the future and to prepare for the future, but it's not wise for one to be in the future, for that is how I lose myself. When I lose myself, I lose what is most precious to one. It was so simple, and now he saw it. The presence nourished him. But the man knew it was not going to be easy. Listening to be in the present, learning to be in the present was a process he was going to have to do over and over and over again and again until it became part of him. Now he knew why he had enjoyed being with the old man. The old man was totally present when he was with the younger man. The old man was not thinking about something else or wishing he was somewhere else. He was fully present. And it felt good to be with such a person. The younger man smiled at himself the way the old man used to smile. And he knew, I can choose to be happy now. Or I can try to be happy when or if. The man chose now. And now the man was happy and he felt that at peace with himself and he agreed to savor each and every moment in his life, the apparently good and the apparently bad even if he didn't understand for the first time in his life. It didn't matter. He accepted each of his precious moments on this planet as a gift. I now know that soon, I know that some people choose to receive the precious present when they are young, 
others when they are middle-aged, and some when they are very old, and some people, sadly, never do. I can choose to receive the precious present whenever I want. As the man sat thinking, he felt fortunate. He was one who had received it and who was there. He knew, he now knew he would always be who he was, where he was. He listened again to his thoughts. The presence is what it is. It is valuable, even if I do not know why. It is already just the way it's supposed to be. When I see the present, accept the present, and experience the presence, I am well, and I am happy. Pain is simply the difference between what is and what I want it to be. When I feel guilty over my imperfection past, imperf imperfect past, or I am anxious over my unknown future, I do not live in the present. I experience pain, I make myself ill, and I am unhappy. My past was the present, and my future will be the present. The present moment is the only reality I ever experience. As long as I continue to stay in the presence, I am happy forever, because forever is always the present. The present is simply who I am, just the way I am, right here, right now. And it is precious. I am precious. I am the precious present. It was as though he could hear the old man talking. And then he smiled, and his smile widened, and he laughed, and he felt great joy. He knew he was listening, not to the old man, but to himself. It felt good for him to be with himself, just the way he was. He felt he knew enough. He felt he had enough. He felt he was enough. Now, he had finally found the precious present, and he was completely happy. Several decades later, the man had grown into happy, the happy preciousness and a healthy old man, and one day, a little girl came by to talk to him. She liked to listen to the old man, as, he, as she called him. It was fun to be with him. There was something special about him, but she didn't know what it was. One day, the little girl began to really listen to the old man. Somehow, she sensed something important in his calming voice. He seemed very happy. The little girl couldn't understand why. How could someone so old, she wondered, be so happy? She asked, and the old man told her why. Then all of a sudden, the little girl jumped up and squealed with delight. As the girl ran off to play, the old man smiled, for he had heard what she had said. Wow, she exclaimed, I hope someday someone gives me the precious present. <laughs> And I hope that you will think about this story as you go through your day and allow God to be in your moments of the precious present. Amen? Amen. Amen.